Hello everybody, today I'm solving at coder around constant 15. I'll try to explain my thoughts as much as I could. So contest has already just started. So let's see what we have here. There are n integers, smallest is a, largest is b. We must print the number of different possible sums of such integers. Okay, so not, not much to solve, to be frank. So here, um, yeah, basically in case n is at most two, then it's kind of simple because smallest sum is when everything except the one is equal to smallest integer and everything except one is equal to the largest integer is the maximum possible sum so we have those two simple bounds and we need to output one of them okay so here yeah, no take i think Oh no, there's another trick. If a is more than b, then we should print 0. Uh, or if n equals 1 and a is less than b, we should print 0. Otherwise, we should print a times a minus 1 plus b plus space plus a plus b times a minus 1, right? Okay, so what do we have here? Oh, the number of different possible sums, sorry. So we don't need to print maximum and minimum sum. We need to take the maximum, subtract the minimum, and add 1. Okay, that should work. Not a very interesting problem to be frank, but you one must put some easy problems in the contest. Okay, submission taken, interface taking ages. Well, well, well. Come on. Shouldn't be that hard. We have the standings. of people solving this easy problem and the second one okay come on come submit okay let's see the second problem in the meantime mm. so i have a bit of a runny nose so i'll switch off the camera from time to time It looks like we got to the submit interface finally and can switch to second problem. So 
Add a waiter and he throws us a button where you can up or down. And for each pair of floors, we need to find the minimum number of times to get from one floor to another. So it will obviously be either one or two. Because if we can go the right direction, we can just go. And if we don't, uh, Yeah, seems kind of obvious, yeah. Just one or two and one for all floors from this floor in this given direction. So, accepted first problem, good. Okay, so here also not very interesting. the result as length so this is for one and then for two we need to add extra uh, minus one sorry and the extra two is i otherwise we are the same plus as length Minus one minus I print the result. Yeah, another not super interesting problem. And again, probably will struggle with submission. Okay, so this one is accepted as well. It's nice. So far we can see if other problems are also easy by looking at this scoreboard. Well, we could. System is unusually slow this time. Actually, no, no other problems solved yet. So let's read the next one. So there's a grid, and each color square is blue or white. <laughs> and the blue squares form a tree or a forest. Yeah, forest. I'm using the four adjustment scene. And the question is uh, given a rectangle, then there are queries, 200,000 queries. Given a rectangle, how many connected components are there if we, if we remove everything except this rectangle? Okay, so we can probably afford time proportion to the boundary of the rectangle will be 200,000 times 8,000, so it will be 22 billion operations in 4 seconds, we can probably squeeze that in, but I guess probably there is a nicer way. Okay, let's read other problems. Uh, so this one, there is an integer. Uh, there are two numbers A and B, and we look at bitwise or of some subset of numbers between A and B. How many different integers we can get? Well, this looks more interesting than the previous one. Let's think a bit about this one. So, uh, so what can we do here? Uh, 
Okay, so I guess. So all possible integers will be at least a and at most uh, the same number of bits as b because we cannot get new bits from anywhere. So now suppose we want to construct an integer then we can afford to or everything that is a subset of this integer. So. It seems to me basically that we can... The problem is that some bits can only appear together in a sense. So... Uh... So suppose A has some binary representation. One, zero, zero, one, zero, one, zero, zero, one of some binary representation so if b has more bits okay so we want to find and the number we want to build uh, has a certain uh, highest one bit so if this highest one bit is higher than the one in a then we're pretty sure we can construct yeah, we can construct any number. Uh, because we can start with one and all zeros. This number is in range. And then we can use... Uh, no, not true. So in case A and B highest bit differs by at most two, then we can construct any number, yeah. But otherwise... We do not really. So yeah, if this highest one is the same as highest bit in B, then we might not. And A and B differ by one or zero, that might not have the opportunity. So here we have. Still, it should be simple. Sorry, switching off again. Okay, so basically for every one to the at the position of rightmost zero or to the left of it in A, we can get the number one highest bit and one in this position. So those ones we can get the arbitrary configuration. And for the trailing ones Uh, yeah, I guess we can also get arbitrary. We, yeah, we almost always. Oh, but the only number that matters and which have the same number, of the, which are higher than B, because, uh, but because of all the rest we can obviously build. So if numbers are higher than B, and we want to build a configuration. So this is where it gets interesting, right? So uh -huh. so 
So I guess if we look at the next one in the number that we want to get, it's uh, it has the same prefix as b, and then it has a one instead of a zero. So there, this one cannot come. Oh, it can. If there was at least another one, another one in b before that, then this num we can build this number just by replacing this one with zero and having the rest the same. So the problem only happens if we want a number that b has some prefix one and a few zeros and want to change one of those zeros to one. So this we cannot get from numbers with the same number of digits. So the only thing we could get is if this one was the first digit of our smaller number. So if our a allows this and in those cases, yeah, I guess we can get numbers starting from one zero and then one some zeros and then a. So we can get all numbers starting from this. And we cannot get any number smaller, yes. So it seems to me that's really simple actually, the solution. So we read two numbers. And now we need to find the next one and B. Okay, we can do this first equals long highest one bit of B. Long second equals so if b equals first, so if there are no other bits, uh, okay, so then the position of bit and then we can have second and then second equals minus one otherwise second equals long number of trailing zeros long highest one bit b xor one shift first and then here b equals one shift first So this are those two b first and second bit in b and now for numbers which have a change after so basically then have the same first and second bit we can build any number so this gives us uh If second is more than zero, then we get one to the power of second. Uh, minus one, right? So, because, oh no, not really, right? So, we can get any number with this prefix. So, we should give, get the... One shift first plus one shift uh yeah I guess one shift second plus one minus one. So for example if second equal to minus one that also works, right? So this is like the maximum number we can get, so we need to take this. And subtract B and add one. 
I don't know, not add one because here we start with b minus a plus one then we add those numbers that start with this prefix and now up to numbers that have a change somewhere in the middle so there we can we can go we can basically put an a Oh, maybe it's not so simple, right? Because if A and B have the same number of digits, yeah, yeah this is not good. Oh my god, yeah, this was more tricky than I thought. Let's see, am I already losing by a lot? How many solutions? No, only some for C. This one is fine. Okay, so need to correct a bit. So again, I have this... Uh... Okay. If A and B have the same number of digits, then they have the same prefix. And then at some point they differ. So what this means, A has zero and B has one. What this means is that uh, this prefix will always be the same in any answer and we can just discard it, right? So we can always say that A has less digits than B. And this doesn't affect the answer in any way. So here, if get this uh, if uh, if they have the same so I guess while they have the same highest bit we can remove it I guess we can just a was on zero and highest one bit of a equals highest one bit of b and then we just remove this bit because it doesn't affect the answer in any way so now we get to a case where a has less bits than b and uh, here, if, if both of them are zero, then we just have one number. Basically, this happens if they were equal. Okay, so now what I wrote is true. And then uh, we can go get any number starting from A and then higher. So we can get now any number okay so if a equals zero or uh, or long highest one bit of a number of trailing zeros is at most second this means that we can get all the numbers we want uh, so that would add uh, one shift first plus one minus one so this is the maximum number we can get and then we need to subtract one shift left first plus one shift left second plus one and if second is one less than first then and then we need to do plus one so essentially this yeah and then if second plus one equals first this will be zero so it should be fine otherwise Otherwise, uh, we can go from, we can get any, any number. Okay, otherwise, uh, okay, so we have this one, zero, 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 one and B, and then some, so 
someone here in A, then we can get for higher bits we can get any number again. And for this bit in particular, have some number of ones which are forced to have. And then hmm, interesting, we kind of seem to have the same problem but recursive, right? Oh my god, this is a tricky problem. I probably shouldn't should have thought more about it. Okay. Wait, how many points is it? Oh, no, this is all good. Okay. So um, here we have some ones in A and we must have them. But then we have some zero and so yeah, it looks like we are solving the same problem essentially. Uh, with a smaller range, right? So, no, not the same. So, we can have any bigger number and want to see how many different combinations we can get. Mm -hmm. Here we have this number in the middle, and then here we have one shoot left in the middle plus one. And so these numbers we can definitely get with all higher positions, but then if we want to keep all those to zero, then we are forced to have now used only numbers with the same length as a for this. And so Okay, and so we must yeah, so huh. so we must add something else, right? So here we have of course to use numbers with same as or Set individual bits starting from second down. Oh my god. So. <clears throat> so I guess now. Let me iterate over first difference of our number that we want to get with A, right? So A starts with some ones and a zero. And then here we get some ones and a zeros, and we cannot do it, right? So it must have the same number of ones in prefix as a. Uh, then, uh, so after that, if uh, it has a zero instead of one in some position, uh, what we can, no, we can't get this, right? So. All the numbers, yes, the numbers obviously will be greater. Oh yeah, I guess all just all numbers greater than A we can get. Yeah, that's truly stupid. I guess we can just get all numbers greater than A and cannot get numbers smaller than A, right? So here we will get a maximum number is this one. Minus a minus one. Oh, and without this, yeah, I think so. Okay, so that took me quite some time. Probably, maybe because of talking as well. Okay, so seven nine, I get one less. Okay, oh, including a right, so yeah. Indeed. Yeah, now it passes all the tests I have, so let's submit. I think it should be fine. And I guess let's see. So did somebody solve all four in the meantime? No, that's interesting. So 
at least I'm not terribly behind in that case. If it passes, of course. But I have high hopes. Okay, so the next problem is yeah, this one is should be much simpler, but I don't see how is everybody solving it. So you have a rectangle and How can you find the number of connected components without iterating over the entire field? Yeah, this one passes. And now I even have in the first place. Yeah, I should enjoy the moment. Okay. Still, what happens with this problem? So. Okay, so we can Three can still have almost half of all squares, right? Yeah. So. Oh, but it's a tree, so number of connected components probably uniquely determined by something like uh, for each initial connected component every cut we get for it, so every pair of squares on the boundary from this component uh, adds one essentially. Ah oh, no, it can add one or more, right? So if we have like a path like this, then two cuts, but we have two components, and then if we have path like this, also two cuts but one component so how do we differentiate those interesting and actually we can have yeah like this for example and then four cuts give only two components and it can be anything uh, okay <coughs> Traversing the boundary is probably the right direction, but still cannot see how to get the answer in this case. Still not see how to get the answer. And the strongest is cut out. Oh yeah, cut out in the region. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yes. So. Okay. So for this, we can. Can we? People solve it in really, really fast, right? Only like five minutes. Come on, it should be something simple. Maybe traversing DFS order and then remember the times. And we can get something. And it's not clear. Mm 
and yeah, I guess if we have marked so if this rectangle doesn't contain the root of the tree we built then it looks like every time we pass through the boundary we get one more so for example here suppose our tree is like this so here we the root is this one so every time a vertex with smaller depths is next to a vertex outside and so of, of sorry larger depth is outside and small depth is inside we get a new component right so we need to count the number of the such things as the depths the distance from the root on the on the crossing and the distance on the root outside is more than the distance of the root inside then we get a new component and this case the root is inside Then we have one component for the root plus all those right yeah seems to be correct this way yeah okay this i can code and we hope one billion is fast enough yeah hope one billion is fast enough what else can we do So first point, remember where it is, is its root and what is the distance to the root in every position in here. Okay. the component and then we have distance okay then we have distance okay then we have distance to the root and so we go rate of oppositions of the root here if uh, field so if there is a one and component is not known Then we have found the new component, right? So we okay. and then we have okay. Then we have uh... what? Uh, we have a Q range so for bread to search. Then we do the breadth search. So we are in this cell, and then we need to iterate over all its neighbors. Ok, 
Okay, there we get plus sign. Dist and then symbols dist and the last one. All right, and then we put it in the queue also. Okay, so this finds the components, and then we also have a root f. And root C. Here we put root R. Hmm. Given that the initial picture is connected, by the way, oh no, we can see here an example. So can be many components actually. We need to, yeah, number of roots. We need to do this with this last sum in. Okay. Okay, and then sums. So here we go, sums. Uh, plus one plus, plus equals one All right so uh, okay and yes and then we need to go uh, I'll, I'll do this uh, kind of prefix sounds so here we get Missing one more parenthesis. Okay, so here I get some um, starting from one. So here we find the, found the prefix sums, and now we can use them to find to process the queries finally. And this is you know, see how people solve in five minutes, to be frank. Looks quite hard to me. Maybe I'm missing some even simpler solution. Yeah. This will get time limit exceeded also and I will have to think more. Four seconds, yeah hopefully not. So for each query we get Okay. Okay, we get those columns. Oh no, actually row column, row column. And now first we have This is the starting points of trees, and then we need to iterate over boundary. So here we go if R1 is more than zero. We don't need comp, right? Because they will always be the same uh, component as they are adjacent. So we can just use dist. Uh, yeah. Maybe a bit faster. Uh, dist r1 c to equals dist r1 minus 1 c. If 
d1 more than 0 and d2 is more than d1. Uh, right, and d2 is more than d1. Then we increment. Okay, then the same if r2 is less than height. R2, R2 minus 1. Also, no, this will be minus 1. And this is so outside is d2. And oh, sorry, outside is d2, and outside should be smaller right we enter so actually here here we have again outside is d2 and yeah and then we have the same but with rows and columns flipped okay so here we go iterate over rows Five minutes for this problem is amazing, and I still can get time limit exceeded, right? Hopefully not, but who knows? Yeah, it's interesting what I get here. So no submissions for last two problems so far, no. Okay. Okay. Looks like time limit exceeded. Why the fact that nothing changes? Yeah, it's time limit. Okay. Oh yeah, I guess what I'm doing now I can also do with some kind of range queries, right? Yeah, so it was kind of stupid actually to submit this. Yeah, I need to sum of some magical thing over a range. Yeah. So I guess if it doesn't get wrong answers at least I can. Oh my god, I need to improve it even more. How people do it in five minutes? I don't see. Looks super hard to me. I guess it's already spent time on it, makes sense to finish it. Okay, so. Basically, yeah. We have to have four of those. Sums, right? So And then <clears throat> for top sums we have this. Top sums and bottom sums. It's a bottom sum, right? So 
Yeah, bottom sounds. It's left sums, and here we have C plus two, and then we go with left sums and right sums. Yeah. Okay, and then we go. So if our one is more than zero, then we add top sums. Yeah, I guess we can do it anyway. Uh, we need to sum from R1 C1 to R1 plus 1 uh, C2, right? Uh, yeah. Alright. Okay, so that means R1 plus 1 C2 minus top sums R1 plus 1 C1 minus top sums R1 C2 plus top sums R1 C1. Then we do bottom sums <coughs> the same but with R2. Oh no, with R2. Minus one, right? So yes, uh, yes, R two. Okay, bottom sums R two C one minus bottom sums R R two minus one C two plus bottom sums R two minus one C one. Then we go with left sums. So here we have. <coughs> left sums R2 C1 plus 1 minus left sums R1 C1 plus 1 minus left sums R2 C1 plus left sums R1 C1 and finally we go right sums here we go R2 C2 minus right sums R1 C2 minus right sums R2 C2 minus 1 plus right sums R1 C2 minus 1. Okay. Yeah. This is faster, but it doesn't work. Now spend lots of time on debugging. Fair enough. So the last query 1, 2, 2, 4. Okay, one, two, two, four. Yeah, we have this. Wait, but here we just have two roots, right? Oh no, no, not two roots. Okay, so we they should should have been caught by left sums. Okay, so let's see what's wrong with left sums formula. Er. Two minus R one C one plus one. Okay. 
should be good, right? From the left to south. Okay. This query. So, so far we have one, and it doesn't change, but left sums. So let's see. Uh, left sums. Error. Two. Okay, so this is one. This is zero. Error. Oh, this is not good. And one is equal to zero. Yeah, it shouldn't happen. Let sums with zero should always be zero. Oh my god. Okay. Yeah, I spent like half an hour in this problem, it took less than five minutes. Yeah. Really? So now it will probably be accessed in about five minutes. Oh my god. Okay, so now probably lots of people have those four problems, yeah. Maybe it has appeared before, I don't know. Okay, now it should work. Let's see, we have 50 minutes for two problems and so far. Half an hour wasn't enough for us, easier ones, so okay, let me take another break. Okay, so this problem yeah, should be much easier. So there are an object with starting position and velocity on the line. can mark some of them black and then we will move and as soon as a black point and a white point meet it also becomes black and we need to find the number of ways to mark initial vertices black such that in the end everything is black mm -hmm. okay So, I guess, hmm, should it be, I guess for every point we can find which points it will meet. So, from points with a diff, no, they are all moving in positive direction as well, right? So I guess each point will yeah. So 
each point it starts moving to the right and then if it's initially white then it will become black as soon as it meets some black vertex all right and then but it doesn't really matter because so let's look at the leftmost black point if if the left if the leftmost thing is marked black then all things that are slower than it will also be marked black and we can just stop considering it them yeah we can stop considering them because they cannot no they can no they cannot oh yeah they still can affect things okay let's see nobody saw them any of those i guess yeah so what's this last problem okay so here we have the euclidean algorithm and Yeah. And we do with the modular, including with the modular, and then we need to find the number, the maximum step count, and the number of occurrence, the maximum step count in a range uh, x and y. How how many times we achieve the maximum count? Okay, this problem also looks interesting. So I guess basically how we do so if we look at maximum step count as a table, as a step count as a table, so first we have a row of zeros then on diagonal we have ones. No, diagonal is product, right? So A and A times B is one. Mm -hmm. Or B times A, right? So then we get some. So the number is not only too high. So yeah, probably the maximum step count can be found by Fibonacci sequence, I guess. So we can find the number. And the number of steps we can find probably by starting with one one and basically one each. Yeah, I guess it's kind of obvious. So if each each quotient should be equal to one, for this to be as long as possible, then we can increase some quotients in this. Yeah, so because we start with uh, <coughs> start with zero one, then we repeatedly replace by like. Uh, Basically, replace x y with where x is less than equal to y. We repeatedly replace this with actually no right so. Yeah, we cannot have arrive at one 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 right so we arrive at start with two one right so two one we get to zero one and yeah because if we got one one somehow then we used to have something one and yeah so as soon as we get a one next step we are over so yeah so we start with two one and then we repeatedly one two sorry then we repeatedly replace with y uh, y times a plus x 
and this a is at least one so smallest ways to get always one but sometimes we can increase and the question is how many times we can increase so that we can still fit Okay. So how many pairs? Oh my god, there are also many queries. So I guess this should be really simple formula in a sense. Something logarithmic. Yeah, logarithmic to find this number of steps, but then what do we do next? I guess for all steps except the very last step any change in this step would result in like exponential blow up so not really right so just will be multiplied by all by all the remaining steps but still Interesting. And those are supposed to be easier than top coder. Hard problem, both of those. Maybe I'm really bad at thinking today. So, what can we do here? So, we have those things. Yes, I can do something square root like thingy, but to do it in very fast time, it's not clear. So we need to find number of sequences of this a1, a2, a n, such that uh, 1 plus 2 times a1 multiplied by a2 plus 1 plus 2 times a1 multiplied by a3 and so on, right? So, so this is basically a product of matrices uh, 1, 2 multiplied by matrix uh, 0, 1, 1, A, E. Yeah. Uh -huh. So the product of those matrices times vector 1, 2 is less than less than x, y. Okay. And so if there was just an upper boundary, then I guess uh, no, still not clear actually how to. Still not clear how to do this. Even if uh, Even if there is only an upper boundary, maybe because it's some transformation. But it's only the maximum number, so I guess we don't have that much. So basically, multiplying by 1.6. One more time is already not 
uh, big enough, not yeah, it's bigger than the answer. So it means that probably <laughs> okay, answers can be big. Is the maximum test? Wait, kind of. Yes, answers can be big. Except the last guess, I guess. So. Maybe except the last step, there is not much variability because if we increase. Some number from one to two intuitively it seems that it should increase more than 1.6 times. Interesting, yeah, maybe there is not that much variability. Hmm. Interesting. Mm, yeah, maybe. Okay, let's make a quick experiment. Okay, so let's see. Is okay. So let's see. Okay. So we can go with a little quotient. Here we get if we couldn't if there is equals no break, otherwise at least equals mass max at least it is times plus one. If at least <coughs> okay, okay, we have this. Can you turn your pair off at least? Okay, that's it. 
right so if mm -hmm. e plus is more than x or this is more than y then we cannot move any further oh no actually if we can we cannot move any further if it's like this mm, right yeah cannot move any further then uh, if we cannot move any further then we are done right so now we need to uh, count Yeah, ideally we would stop previous step, right? So mm -hmm. yeah, so okay, this is slow, but okay, let's still do it. Then return new player steps uh, one. Mm, so this should work. Okay, now we need to count, count some of them twice, right? that is slow only because of last step so for example if I create a test case I 
then it will be fast. No, it's not fast. Okay. It's not fast. Thousand thousand. We can do the answer in that case. Fourteen two. Okay. What if we make this be ten thousand ten thousand? That's very small. Thirty six. Why does it take a second to get thirty six? Shouldn't it? No, no, it cannot take a second to get thirty six. Something is broken. Okay, here we see uh, if there is. At least is more than zero and oh no, but we should return no. Okay, if at least is more than zero and at least equals minus and if at least not equal minus times plus one. Okay, you don't get runtime exception, but that takes a second. No, I don't understand. We do 18 steps, then we bail out, and then basically number of oh well, why does it take a second? I don't understand. Instant good. And I claim this will be instant even if I do this big number here. Even though I have six hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. Okay, let me do three hundred. That will be five, ten, hundred, hundred, three hundred. Like this. Let's see how long this takes. Yeah, so three hundred already takes almost a second. Which is not very good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I guess what I get is something like 100 times 80. Yeah. So I need to spin this up further. Okay, but what I wanted to check my hypothesis was that you cannot really increase two of them, right? So. Yeah, now I guess I committed to solving this problem. Yeah, I guess I am. You cannot increase two of them, actually increase two. Basically, every time you increase once, you go from P plus Q to P plus two times Q. So essentially, we increase at least in worst case, yeah, at least 1.5 times. So probably you cannot do this twice. All right, so, yeah, so I guess what we need, here we need to find 
желуш. Ягес. So we need to, but the last one can be big because y can be much more than x, right? So essentially we iterate with basic uh, fractions. And initially if we go from two to four, like a 2x increase of the wheel, so not, not good. Mm -hmm. 0, 2, or 0, so 1, 2, or 1, 4. Yes, I should put it out. Okay. Let's have this incorrect solution. I can check again, so but slow slower than needed okay okay so now what do we do okay so is how we find the number of steps and p equals mp and q equals mq and now we need to quickly find given a certain step if we increase by one what we will get in the end much we can increase right so how much we can increase at this step so that we can still get something fine so we need to find how is the last yeah so what is how is the last number expressed? So I guess we need to find those products of those two by two matrices, right? So okay, here we can create those. And the maximum answer is 85, as we see. So we can create those matrices. Two by two matrices. Here we do M steps. Mm, matrix is like this. So zero equals one, M steps two equals one, M steps three equals T. We have those matrices. And this we can pre-compute by the way, right? Yeah, we can pre-compute it only once. Yeah.
here. So you click and hold this one, hopefully. And yeah, not, not much time will be left. Okay. Two one pros. Okay, so here we just multiply the matrices. And get this matrix in the back. Control overflow, so mm -hmm. okay. pre computed those products. Mm, right. So then we just found the number of steps this way and now again we start with the same We see how much we can increase this one. Right, so without mm -hmm. so here we call it mint and now if we get Q 
q and p plus t times q and we multiply by the this new matrix Yeah, we on which step, right? Instead of while, we get to do. Uh, so we need not an exception, right? Uh, hold an exception like that. Hmm. Interesting how we can get this exception so we recorded how many times we put oh we have because we have plus plus steps and that explains everything so now we don't get any exceptions okay so here we need to update the answer this equals zero now print all in steps plus ways so here, uh, what we can do is we can say that L uh, will get Q and P plus T times Q and that will be multiplied by a matrix. And so X now. 1 1 prod uh, steps minus 1 minus right so we will have this matrix on the outside possibly a unit matrix so then we get uh, a long uh, times t is equal to q times extra uh, one right uh, uh, yeah. along b equals uh, q times extra zero plus P times extra one, so we get A times T plus B is less than X. Long, long max T equals minus equal one. Max T equals. Uh, x minus b divided by a yes and if a equals zero long max value or and now a equals uh, q times x to three b equals Q times extra two plus P times extra three. And A times T plus B is less than Y. Mm -hmm. Max T равно mass min, max T. Y minus B divided by E. Materials plus equals max T minus min T. Ways plus equals. And now if it's less than X, right? X minus you know, A times min T plus B is less than X. Ways plus equal. Mm -hmm. Max T 
fast enough now but it gives on gacha mm -hmm. not good answer in case of neg oh wait not good answer in case one one Tricky case. Okay. Can give a bit more than needed, but also one. Okay, so if steps is equal to. Steps is never zero, right? So, here if steps is less than equal to one, then we always get one, and number of ways is any two numbers are not equal to zero, right? Third case. Okay. Let's see here. Hopefully it will be fast enough. Should I think it will be? Okay, so how do we get so much? Not too big of an answer. And this step also not big of an answer. Yeah, so the last step extra is nothing, right? Yeah. Three and five. Yeah, nice. Yeah, nice. Oh, because modular. Stupid thing. Yeah. So good, actually. Okay. 
tipo de coisa. Sim. Tem um pico de 65, o Samsung está bastante interessante. E o Ok. Então vamos para o Number. E qual o Number de edição? Ok. Vamos lá, vamos lá. Okay, and the second step should not try and that was still too little. Still too little. Go for this thirty five case. Yes, I have to increase two of them at the same time. And this one has to send in the box watch cases. Probably still this camera not so effective. Eleventh place. No, that's not good. Okay, thanks all for watching. Right, see you next time.